it doesn't make any sense guys like don't make your friends break the bank because you want to get married don't do that what's up guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Bimi I am a Nigerian lifestyle vlogger welcome to my channel and thank you for stopping by so today we're just continuing with the series that I started out I planned my Nigerian wedding series I hope you guys have been loving it so far I just hope so um, yeah so today is just going to be a general gist about how I kind of save money on my Nigerian wedding. So finances is like a huge thing that everybody always does not want to talk about. People always want to talk about it when they are getting married and I don't think so. If you have guardians or family that are planning to pay for some things for your wedding, sit down and talk about it. Let's understand what, do, what are my parents paying for? What am I going to pay for? What does my uncle want to pay for? What does my auntie want to pay for? For those of you that are privileged to have uncle and auntie to pay for stuff for you, what do they want to pay for? Sit down and understand. I stood, sat down with my parents and I understood what they were going to pay for. They want to take care of food, they want to take care of all, they want to take care of this and that. And then I was, I and my husband were focused on the things that we wanted to take care of. So to save money on a Nigerian wedding, the first thing everybody always tells you is, oh, you have to stick to a budget, you have to have a budget. The first thing my event planner asked me was, oh, what's your budget for this, what's your budget for that? And for, for me, I've never really been in the wedding space before. So how do I know how to budget? And I know a lot of you are probably thinking too, because I remember the first time they asked me, oh, what's your budget for wedding gown? Someone once told me you get wedding gown for 50K. So me, I was like, okay, 50K wedding gown. Do you get what I mean? So, and then everybody was now looking at me like, ah, that is so unrealistic. I'm like, well, you people keep saying budget, budget. I cannot budget if I don't know what the actual regular amount of these things always, like what it is. I feel like the very first thing that you need to do is to do your research. So kind of just find out on an average, how much does this thing cost? How much does that thing cost? You know, stuff like that. Because you cannot budget without actually knowing the actual amount of things. I have a friend that her mom is telling her, oh, uh -uh, makeup, makeup artist care. Don't worry, with 20K, we'll find makeup artists for you. And you would think that it's actually possible because you haven't done your research and you don't know on an average how much these things actually cost. And I don't know how to bring down and how to make a realistic budget that you would have to keep and hold with your dear life, even though so many little, little, little things are still going to pop up on the way. But if you have a really solid budget that you have created by yourself, a realistic budget, trust me, you won't go wrong. I'll be able to save some money. The second thing I did to save money for my wedding was I repeated things. Mm -hmm. And funny thing was, people did not even know. I repeated things a lot. So, you know, you have pre-wedding shoot, you have introduction, like I said, you have court wedding, you have uh, engagement, you, you can repeat things. For example, let me tell you things that I repeated. The shoe that I wore for my introduction, that I, it was just a regular random shoe, guys. I bought very cheap. The shoe that I wore for my introduction was the shoe I wore for my court wedding. You cannot kill me. You cannot sue me. The hair that I used for my pre-wedding shoots was the same hair that I wore for my court wedding. I'm not going to go and buy new hair because I want to do court wedding. Nope. The dress that I used for my pre-wedding shoot was the same dress that I wore to my court wedding. I just, because I realized that all these things that you have to do, it's, so are you supposed to buy new, new, dre new dress for introduction, new dress for pre-wedding, maybe you have like three different shoots, you have three new dresses or three new outfits, new dress for court wedding, new shoe, new accessories, new girl, nah fam. The accessories I used for my introduction was the same thing that I used for my pre-wedding shoot, was the same thing that I used for my court wedding. You cannot sue me for it. So to save money, trust me guys, you can repeat stops. The third thing I did was I did a lot of DIY. I carried my two left legs and went to Lagos Island Market. I went to Tom Jones to buy some of the things I needed. I went to Gorodo to buy a uh, souvenir and gifts for my bridesmaids and you know, the bridal party. I went to Dosumu to buy my accessories that I needed for my wedding. Do a lot of DIY. Don't sit like I literally wanted to sit down on social media, Instagram all day and be scrolling and be saying, Oh, I like this one, let me pay for this. When you actually go to Lagos Island Market, like my eyes were opened, guys. Like I'm normally not the type that goes to Lagos Island Market to buy stuff. I just sit down on Instagram and buy stuff if I can afford it. But guys, going to all that all those places opened my eyes and saw that man, they are just 419 us in this social media or something. So DIY a lot of things guys, 
make stuff by yourself your bouquet you can make by yourself you can get fresh flowers it doesn't have to be by the way my bouquet was repeated i did not buy a new bouquet the next thing i did to save cost was that i cut my coat according to my size so or according to my club so the things that were not absolutely necessary like renting on limo renting on bentley is not necessary it's not for us to get to church and come back fun fact on my traditional wedding day guys my husband drove my car in in, in he was sitting in front i was sitting at the back my sister was sitting with him one of my friends was sitting with me at the back that's how we got to our traditional uh, wedding venue because my parents just felt why did we have to go to a hotel to change and it was because we wanted to really we wanted to take really nice pictures i was big on pictures and videography for the wedding it was my big thing i was ready to splurge on that so i was ready so we got a hotel just one room where we all changed and took pictures and everything but my parents were like we should have just done it at home so they didn't send the cash they didn't send my father's cash come and pick me people of god we entered my small Corolla like that, we drove and went to the venue, we did not die. So there was no renting of Bentley or limousine or this or that that you would necessarily absolutely be breaking the bank for. There was nothing like that. Things that you do not, that you know that it's not a big, and like I said, if you have the money, by all means, splurge. But things that you know that it's not really, really a big deal like that, like having a, a photo booth. I wanted a photo booth, but when I say yeah, the prices, I just relax myself because guys, after the wedding ceremony, there is the marriage. Trust me, there is the marriage. If you're if you're just getting a new apartment or your husband just getting a new apartment, you have to set up that apartment. It's going to cost a lot. So you don't just want to see that. And don't rely. Don't you ever, ever, ever rely on the money that they're going to spray you at the wedding. Because trust me, guys, all those two hundred naira that I see that looks like a lot of money. It's not a lot of money. By the time you count it, you see that it's not even rich anything. You're not even rich to buy one appliance in your house. The next thing I need to save money on my wedding was that I did I made e invites I actually designed my e invites by myself and I sent it to people on social media on WhatsApp Instagram message all the people that I needed sending something to we made e invites it was only my parents that needed the actual physical card because you know old, older people now you can't yeah but even my parents they still use the e invite to send e, to send the invite to some people so make e invites and that saves you a lot of money guys it saves you a whole lot the next thing we did to save money was that we got vendors based off of referral so i noticed that when you get vendors based off of referral rather than just contacting them via social media that you met them you actually would save money because you can be like ah so so and so recommended me to you and when the person is giving price so oh, because of this person you know i'll cut that the price to this it doesn't happen all the time but i got those kind of things do you guys get i got those kind of um offers during my wedding process because somebody referred a vendor to me so get vendors based on referrals and like i've always said don't even get vendors based on what you just see or the hype oh my god this person is huge person is big oh you will appear on better niger please don't do that you will just kill yourself unnecessarily because you might get disappointed at the end of the day another thing that i did to save money for my wedding was i looked out for necessary promos deals here and there our Ashi okay that we wore it was a deal from house of Ashi okay she was in one promo that time we quickly paid for it because we saw that she did good work and my cousin actually referred her to me so we took advantage of that deal i think our cake the two cakes too was on it was one deal that like somebody was in the end of the year they say if you make if you purchase the wedding cake they will also make your traditional for free you know all those kind of gigs all those kind of deals please take advantage of it like trust me <laughs> you will not regret it also able to save money for my bridesmaids by asking them to decide who they want to like what kind of dress they want to wear what style they wanted who do they want to make the dress for them what kind of shoe do they want to wear their makeup their hair i was able to save money for them by asking them to decide that way they were even more happy and grateful because i realized that a lot of people these days you just you just tell your bridesmaid bring 50k bring 80k for what now where do you think they are getting that money from where like they're your friends they, they want to they really want to be around you to support you but when you're making them break the bank it doesn't make any sense guys like don't make your friends break the bank because you want to get married don't do that like that's just unfair so they decided what dress they wanted to wear they found a deal like i said take advantage of all the deals that you see they found a deal um that if you make the dresses you get free earrings or something like that 
so they went for that deal. Um, the person that was going to do their makeup, they decided amongst themselves the kind of makeup artists they wanted, how affordable it was, who can afford this much, who cannot afford this much. People who make their hair, people who make my hair, that was all natural. And they had this deal where if they make my hair, they make each of my bridesmaids' hair for 2000 naira extra. So it, it just, the deal just came together like that. And that's why I said take full advantage of that. Don't let your bridesmaids go broke. I know that the people, we want to save money for our weddings, but don't let people around you also go broke because you're trying to save money for your wedding. At the end of our wedding, and there was something that I realized, guys, there are some things that are not just worth fighting over. Like, oh, I want this, I want this. I remember during my wedding planning, I kept saying, oh, I wanted pancakes and waffles and desserts and this and that. I wanted Chinese rice, I want this and that. Funny thing was that all those things were at the wedding, but guess what? I didn't even use my mouth to taste out of it. Can you imagine all the things that I was fighting for? My husband and I didn't even get to eat out of it. I think we only ate at the reception, maybe when I was changing my dress or maybe when we were sitting down. I think I know I drank Chapman. That one I know I did, but I don't remember eating any other thing. Maybe I took one piece of samosa or something. So I was just like, all these things that I was fighting over, that I wanted this, I wanted that. At the end of the day, my mom did not even touch any one of it. Like, so pick your battles, guys. Like, don't like, don't be like, oh, I want this and that and that and that. Especially if you cannot afford it, pick your battles. The thing that you can afford, that you know that you cannot compromise on, mm, the one that you can compromise on, get it done. Yeah. So as always, if you found yourself liking this video, do not forget to comment in the section down below. If you have questions for me that you want me to answer, I would be so happy to answer it for you guys. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you found yourself liking it. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click on that subscribe button right there, guys. And don't forget to share with everybody that you know. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!